Hey everybody, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. If you're looking for web hosting, I've been using them for 10 years. You can pull your resources with them so you can have multiple servers on one Linode account. In addition to that, the price point is just gonna save you a lot of money over Azure AWS. So if you're looking to host something, website, video game server, whatever it is, uh, check out Linode. They're rated number one as infrastructure as a service according to G2. Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why I chose Node over .NET Core. And I said, I should probably mention, like, I don't know why I'm, I chose to record inside here. I feel like I'm about to be executed. It uh, seems like it. So anyway, I probably won't record in here anymore, but for this video, it's already too late. So let's go ahead and talk about Node versus .NET Core and why in 2020, roughly when I started the project, why I chose Node over .NET. Now, I'm not trying to piss people off, rub people the wrong way. Uh, I'm not trying to like inflame people. You know what I mean? Like we always want to fight and argue over certain things. So I've been a .NET developer for over seven years and I've been away from it for a couple of years. And one of the main reasons why I was really excited about .NET Core going into like 2019, 2020, was that it was really becoming an option that you could actually use with Linux where when it was first announced that .NET Core was going to be cross-platform with the Cache for Web Server, it was still being he heavily developed, so it wasn't really an option. Like when they mentioned it as being an option, it really wasn't. But you fast forward a couple of years, and .NET Core is just as capable as Node. So you know that being said, like Node is built for the web and really the web only. Even though you can do other things with it, most people are not. Whereas .NET Core, there's way more involved there. The .NET library, it's a, it, it, it's for software applications, for video games, for websites. Like you're not limited really to the web. And and like I said, there's always going to be some person that's going to make the argument, well, you can make video games with Node or something like that, but it's really not feasible. Now, there's probably video game studios that are using Node, of course, like everybody else. And that's actually one of the reasons why I chose Node is because everybody's using it. Every website has to use it. Now, really, that was one of the biggest benefits of Node because you have all these JavaScript developers that were already out there. So really, companies are looking at, okay, can I just get my JavaScript developers to start writing back-end server-side code? And that was really the biggest selling point of Node out of the gate. And even to date, it's still probably one of the biggest selling points. So yeah, I mean, while both options are cross-platform, I do feel like Node has been cross-platform longer than .NET Core. Uh, it definitely has. And in addition to that, there's just less to learn. When I was first getting started at C-Sharp Development, I was doing web forms, and, and uh, that is a god-awful way to actually write web applications. But in a, in, a long, uh, in a nutshell, basically, web forms was taking the old school win forms applications where like you drag a button and do the click handlers, all that stuff. And basically they tried to apply that to the web. So it's like, oh, you didn't have to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Just learn the C-sharp way of writing these engines, you know, these template engines, and use the code behind to do all your backend logic. It was just, it was awful. Uh, but that said, like when I was getting started learning that, like I was like reading books on it and I was just like, holy shit, web forms alone is like, it would take me like, you know, days to understand the data grid and all this stuff. And even then I wouldn't. And like, um, you know, I, but I had these ambitions. I was like, well, with .NET, I'm going to be able to do video games and mobile. And I was telling some coworkers, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm definitely going to get into all that stuff. And there was this architect. I remember one time he's like, look, do you, uh, .NET is so large. And he's like, you're never going to know all of .NET. And that's kind of what he told me. And, you know, years and years later, I would probably agree with that. So that said, um, why didn't I go with .NET if I've been a C-sharp developer? I mean, so there's a couple of other uh, issues. One of them being is that, like, number one, I told you I'd stepped away from the code anyway. I have to write JavaScript anyway. Uh, I have to do it on the front end. I might as well do it on the back end. I'm only dealing with websites as far as my personal projects, so I didn't need to write a video game or anything. And then, in addition, like, I needed to host it somewhere, so I felt like with reliable hosting, a lot of times with a C-sharp solution or a .NET Core, most of those corporate businesses are going to be on Azure and they're going to pay a ton of money because they can save money as a big corporation to not have these data centers and stuff. But I'm not a big corporation and I don't really have to have like a worldwide elasticity to be able to scale. And we always talk about all this scaling stuff. And like I've found after 10 years of doing this, that like all the talk about scale is, is just for not. It's, it's just for not. By the time you have 
a problem with scale, that's a problem you probably want to have. And I guess to clarify that is uh, what I mean is as a business owner, if you're getting so much traffic to your website, even if you're not charging money for it, like that is a good problem to have. So where all these frameworks started falling on their face and you'd have somebody at Netflix talking about some of the problems they had and why they moved away from it or wrote their own thing or something like that. Well, it's like most people's problems aren't what Netflix is dealing with. It's not what Facebook's dealing with. It's uh, and, and by the time you actually are, like I said, that's probably a pretty good blessing. Um, so another thing with C Sharp versus Node, and really when I say C Sharp, because that's the preferred language for .NET Core, uh, but there is like way more documentation for Node, and there's also way more projects for Node. So if I need to do image manipulation uh, or some sort of crazy file system updates and things, there's pretty much a Node module that is doing almost everything. And then when I compare that to .NET Core, it's really not the same. Not yet. Dude, I do not know why these lights keep popping on and off. I guess the sensor or something, but that's kind of annoying. Looks like I'm giving my last will in this uh, location. So I, I, yeah, I won't record in this, uh, this place anymore. So yeah, in a nutshell, those are the big reasons why I chose Node over .NET Core. I mean, if I had to put it in, in an order of priority, number one, it was just simply about the money and the documentation and how quickly I'd be able to get up and running with it. So number two, they both accomplished the same thing. I just simply was like, yeah, that's, that's where I'm gonna go. But I do think both the solutions will get you where you wanna go. I think if I were looking for a job and there was a lot of Microsoft companies around where I was living, or where I wanted to work, I would probably have gone with .NET Core just because I'm looking for work. But I was looking for the most scaled down, quickest business solution possible. And for me, I just sort of went with my gut on that and I went with Node. Uh, but I think, like I said, they'll both get, to, get you to where you need to be. All right, so if you're learning the code, check out my website, codehawk.com. I built this from the ground up. It's using Nest.js, Node, React, a bunch of other stuff. There's even Vue in here. Uh, the website is one price for everything so you just get the all access and then you can have all the courses you do have to log into the website some people are confused about that you register you log in you'll have all the courses once you pay for it all right thanks for watching bye